morning, everyone. Good morning. Always great to be with you on what I think is a fine Wednesday morning. Always hard to know with this strange weather right now, but before we jump into the service, let's just take a moment to stop, to recognize that God is present with us, that he's speaking into our hearts even now. Then would you stand with me as we sing our opening hymn, which is hymn 205. The Day of Resurrection. The Day of Resurrection. service continues on page 67. Let us say the collect together. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write both these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who has given thine only Son to be unto us both a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. 
Give us grace that we may always most thankfully receive that his inestimable benefit and also daily endeavor ourselves to follow the blessed steps of his most holy life through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Would you please be seated for the first reading? If you'd like to follow along in the readings, they're found on page 192. The epistle is written in the first St. Peter 2, 19. This is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully, for what glory it is, if when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently. But if when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, who, when he was reviled, reviled not again, when he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to find that judgest righteously, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live into righteous, unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned under the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Here ends the first reading. Thank you, Kathy. Our psalm for today is Psalm 119. We're just going to do the first four parts, because it's a very long psalm. It's found on page 485. So Psalm 119, parts 1 through 4, on page 485. There was, the psalm is very long because there's a tradition in Jewish culture where poems would be, uh, they try to start each section of the poem with a letter from the alphabet. So each part correlates to a letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Uh, but we'll just do the four, first four letters. Blessed are those that are undefiled in the way and walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and seek him with their whole heart. Even they that do no wickedness, but walk in his ways. Thou hast ordained thy precepts, that we should diligently keep them. Oh, that my ways were made so direct that I might keep thy statutes. So shall I not be confounded, while I have respect unto all thy commandments. I will thank thee with an unfeigned heart when I shall have learned the judgments of thy righteousness. I will keep thy statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way, even by ruling himself after thy word? With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not go astray from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid within my heart that I should not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord. O teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I been telling of all the judgments of thy mouth. I have had great delight in the way of thy testimonies, as in all manners of riches. I will meditate upon thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. My delight shall be in thy statutes and I will not forget thy word. O oh, do, do well unto thy servant, that I may live and keep thy word. Open thou mine eyes, that I may see the wondrous things of thy law. I am a sojourner upon earth. O oh, hide not thy commandments from me. My soul breaketh out for the very fervent desire that it hath always unto thy judgments. 
Thou hast rebuked the proud, and cursed are they that do err from thy commandments. O oh, turn from me, shame and rebuke, for I have kept thy testimonies. Princes also did sit and speak against me, but thy servant is occupied in thy statutes. For thy testimonies are my delight and my counselors. My soul cleaveth to the dust. O oh, quicken thou me according to thy word. I have acknowledged thy ways, and thou heardest me. O oh, teach me thy statutes. Make me to understand the way of thy precepts, and so shall I meditate upon thy wondrous works. My soul melteth away for very heaviness. Comfort thou me according to thy word. Take from me the way of lying, and graciously grant me the, thy law. I have chosen the way of truth, and thy judgments have I laid before me. I cleave unto thy testimonies, O Lord, confound me not. I will run the way of thy commandments, when thou hast set my heart at liberty. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Could I invite Jean to come forward and read the Gospel reading? The Gospel is taken from St. John, verse 10. Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd giveth his life for his sheep. But he that is an hireling, and not the shepherd, whose own sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hiring fleeth, because he is an hireling, and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and I am known of mine. As the Father knoweth before me, even though I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep, and other sheep I have, which are not of his fold. Thus also may, must bring all they that hear my voice, and they shall be one flock and one shepherd. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you. I'm used to it. <laughs> Thank you, Jean. Sorry. No, oh, that's... Would you all bow your heads to me in prayer? Lord God, we thank you that you are our good shepherd. That even when we go astray, you seek us out, longing to bring us into the fold. May we understand and know all that you have done and all that you are doing to bring us back. May we understand your love. And may we, once we have found ourselves with you, be willing to be like you, the Good Shepherd that cares and protects and holds firm even in the face of danger. May we be your faithful servants. Amen. I actually really like Psalm 119. It's not a psalm I spend a lot of time in because it's so long. But it's one of those psalms that at least I kind of associate with. Here's this man or woman that is really digging into God's commandments. Really trying to live into them, but screws up. <laughs> Fails again and again. Doesn't always know what is right or what is wrong. Will go astray. And it's interesting because Psalm 119 is all about how precious God's word is. 
And yet, this person still finds it so hard sometimes. I think it's very easy, for me at least, to associate with that. You know, faced up against any number of challenges, not remembering, or at least not having God's word really have sunk in in the way that it needs to. And so, maybe reacting in anger more than I need to, or uh, maybe resenting, or I don't know, any number of things. Our other two readings sort of present the places that can go. And the psalmist speaks to that a little bit, but the, the two readings speak of sort of three realities of who we can become if we keep turning away from God's word and God. The first one is uh, one that I think we're familiar with, the sheep that have gone astray. This is, uh, I think, a fairly beautiful idea, except also uh, kind of insulting at the same time. <laughs> um, at least my dad used to say that sheep were not the smartest creatures. And so they would go about and they would run into pits and not even recognize where they're going. They'd go into places where there's not good food, into danger, without even realizing it. So they really needed the shepherd. But that's kind of us too. <laughs> So often we know what is safe, what is good, where we need to rest our heads, but at the same time we dwell on fear, we run away, we dig into something else, and we uh, run away from our shepherd. Sometimes, though, well, let me just say a few more about that. A shepherd knew where, you know, for me a shepherd relates to the Psalm 23. A shepherd knows where he's taking them. He knows where it's going to be safe. He knows where there's water. He knows where there's going to be green pasture. He knows how to protect them through absolute fear, even when wolves attack. The other side, though, so the nice thing about the sh sheep idea is that we belong to Christ that we've turned away, but that he's still seeking after us. The harder realization is that sometimes we're more like the hired hand. We have been given a purpose. We all have our calling to care for God, for his sheep, for this world. And yet sometimes it's like we don't belong to him. And we don't consider the rest <laughs> to be part of our fold. I think oftentimes it's easier to care for our family and those we love because they seem so close to us. But there's, in some ways, that's limiting our fold. That's, that's limiting who we think it's important to care for. Even then, it can be tough, and I won't get into that. But I think in this moment, God is trying to remind us that everyone is meant to be part of the fold. How do we welcome and protect the sheep that are out there still running away, still unsure? How can we be like God as a shepherd in the midst of a world that doesn't know him. We're meant to be like him. <laughs> but the last one, and the scariest, is the wolves. And sometimes even those that are meant to be shepherds can be like wolves. There's a fair amount of... Um, you know, Isaiah, Jeremiah texts, pro prophetic texts that speak of Israel's leaders eating the fat of the lambs rather than protecting them. I think we've seen this in the church too often. You know, our very leaders becoming the very ones that cast us away. And this is terrifying. This is immensely sad. Sends a bad image on Christ and on us. 
But that's not reserved just for the people at the front. I've been in plenty of churches that have turned people away because they don't act the way we expect, or look the way we hope, or they don't smell the way we like. I've seen people in the church arguing over where the piano is placed, or the altar is placed. I'm sure that happened here too. <laughs> to some degree, it's okay to argue, but we must remember first things first. How are we being like Christ? How are we caring for the fold, welcoming people in? I think one of the hardest realities of this is that sometimes we don't feel like we're getting what we deserve. Sometimes we want, feel like we need to fight for either what's right or what we think is right. And so we make a strong effort at it. Sometimes it can even be in fighting for the Christian faith. I'm sure all of you can think of plenty of worldly examples of pe people fighting for the Christian faith in such a way that it turns people away, where it hurts people, casts out the fold. But then there's other things, too, that are even less than the Christian faith that we sometimes fight for and turn people away or defend ourselves for. And that's what Peter is speaking into. There will be times in this life where things don't go our way. And that had nothing to do with us. There will be times in our lives when things hurt for no fault of our own. Those are the times when we have the greatest opportunity to be like Christ. To show his gracious love. Because in those moments, we don't deserve it. But neither did Christ. And just like the Good Shepherd, he bore our sins, our hurt, our evil, so that we could step out of it. So that we could be redeemed. The only reason it is possible at all to be righteous is that Christ did it first. Is that Christ did it first so that we might be washed clean, so that we might step out anew, so that our sins and our hurt wouldn't weigh us down. Because they can, and they too often do. But now we are called to be like Christ. There's so many people right now trapped in their sin, in the hurt, in their fear, in their loss. Unsure of how to step forward. Trapped in a cycle of a lot of different things. <laughs> but by bearing with them and for them, by recognizing them as our fold like our children, they too might know the gracious love and redemption of Christ. And they too might be able to step out of that cycle of evil and sin and find the light and the comfort in a shepherd that would die for them. Amen. Would you please stand with me now as we say the creed found on page 71. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, 
and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings. Revelations 5, 12. And now we're going to sing together our offertory hymn, hymn number 293. What is it called? Your hands, O Lord, in days of old. Your hands, O Lord, Lord in, in days, days of, old. of old, were strong to heal and save. <laughs> 293. <laughs>
almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostles has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people. We humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, we pray for a unity across churches, across leaders, that they might be willing to speak your word, that they might together be willing to follow you and not themselves. Lord God, strengthen the hearts and give courage to all Christians that they may hold firm to your way and in all that they are, bear witness to your grace and love. We pray for all those leaders that have fallen away, not led with diligence and with faithfulness. We beseech thee also to lead all nations in the way of righteousness, and so to guide and direct their governors and rulers, that thy people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. And grant unto thy servant Elizabeth our Queen, and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and impartially administer justice, the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. At this time, Lord, we pray over the leaders and people of Ukraine. Lord God, bring peace to that country. Protect those people. May that be a place where justice, freedom, peace is known. We pray over the leaders of Russia for changed hearts and minds. We pray over the leaders in China that they might with mercy and diligence protect and care for their people. May they throw off the needs of economy and look to the needs of those people. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, and to, especially to thy servants, Andrew, Sidney, Priscilla, Kevin, Merv, Gail, and myself. That we may both by our life and doctrine set forth thy true and living word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments, Prosper, we pray thee, all those who proclaim the gospel of thy kingdom among the nations. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, Jean, Jeff, Kathy, Berthy, Bertha, and Eddie. That with meek heart and due reverence, we may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness, all the days of our life. And in our cycle of prayer, we pray for Carlisle and Eden Kemp Jackson, for Robert King, Dorothy Knights, Vivian Knowles, Ron and Barb Landry. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. I invite you to name any names aloud or silent that are on your own hearts. We 
pray for those who have asked for our prayers. For Carlisle, for June, for Stan, Phyllis, Dorothy, Raja, Michael, Lois, Betty, Margaret, Pat, and Sandra, Betty, and Merv. We remember before thee, O Lord, all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear. And we bless thy holy name for all who in life and death have glorified thee. Especially at this time, we lift up to you, Sissy and Sally. We thank you for their lives, for their time with us, for all the love they shared. Beseeching thee to give us grace that rejoicing in their fellowship, we may follow their good examples and with them be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbor and intend to lead the new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confessions to Almighty God in any position of prayer. Saying together, Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life the honor and glory of thy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believed in him should not perish but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying and worthy of all to be received that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith. If anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, creator and preserver of all things. But chiefly are we bound to praise thee for the glorious resurrection of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the very Paschal Lamb which was offered for us and hath taken away the sin of the world, who by his death hath destroyed death, and by his rising to life again 
hath restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father. We most humbly beseech thee and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he'd given thanks, he break it. And gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Whenever you drink this, do it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we, thy humble servants with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and his glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do make before thee in this sacrament of the holy bread of eternal life and the cup of everlasting salvation, the memorial which he hath commanded. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy sin, Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant us peace.
Eddie, the body of Christ is broken for you. Kathy, the body of Christ is broken for you. Jeff, the body of Christ is broken for you. Bertha, the body of Christ, broken for you. Jean, the body of Christ, broken for you. Let's continue to pray with the prayer that Jesus Christ himself taught us, found on page 85. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, to deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee that Thou dost graciously feed us in these holy mysteries. With the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are living members of His mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of Thy everlasting kingdom. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. And although we are unworthy, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty in service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Would you please stand with me as we say the Gloria together? Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesu Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn 319, which is... Let us join our cheerful songs with angels round the throat. Come, let us join our joy cheerful, cheerful songs, cheerful songs with, with angels, angels round, round the throat. The throat. Yes. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.